What's going on everybody? Going Youper here. And today I'm doing a video, I was requested to do this video from somebody that's local here in my area and they're going to do their Michigan CPL class and they wanted me to do a video about it. Now I've done a video about this long ago but I wasn't really able to give my true feelings even though I was pretty straightforward I wasn't able to give my true feelings because I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings as I was new to this area and you upset one person and their brother's mother's cousin's sister's uncle is going to let them know about it and it could have been just kind of a hassle so I tried to keep it as decent as possible so I'm gonna do a little bit better job of telling you exactly how it went down alright so moving here from Florida I have my CCW already in Florida um, but when you move to a new state you have to register with that state so I had to take the class all over again no problem at all I think I paid hundred and thirty five dollars for the class and hundred and fifteen dollars to register with the state now I first went down to my local gun shop down in Menominee and I asked them, hey, where can I go to take my Michigan CPL, concealed pistol license? And he said, well, there's a guy in Marionette that does it and you meet at the hotel and you do the class at the hotel and then you go out to a range and you do the range stuff there. And I was like, oh, that sounds kind of weird. <laughs> I didn't really like the idea of meeting somebody at a hotel to do the, the class. So I was like, well, is there anybody else? He goes, well, you can try up north. So I drove uh, two hours up north and I found a place and they said okay we do it and I asked them the questions that I always ask uh, and that you should ask and that is how often do you have classes, how many people are going to be in the class and um, how many people are going to be teaching the class. And they informed me that they do a class once a month which that tells me right there that there's going to be a lot of people in the class and a lot of people in the class can be very dangerous um, anytime you do anything at a gun range it is dangerous I can't tell you a time that I haven't gone to a range other than my own and it wasn't dangerous um, example this safety check 100% empty nothing in the magazine very safe this ain't the movie so I'm not letting that slap back shut um, I was in a range, an older gentleman was here, I was right here, and every couple of minutes with his 22, he was going, <laughs> he had a jam, I leaned over, I said, sir, please, stop, <laughs> you're going to hurt somebody. He ignored me, went back to firing, a few minutes later, he's, <sighs> I'm standing right here, I'm like, sir, please, I'm not going to ask you nicely again. If you do it again, I'm going to have you kicked off the range. Outdoor range, Cecil Webb in Florida. He uh, told me to mind my own business, and I told him I wasn't going to give him no more warnings. Three minutes later, I said, no problem. I set my firearm down, went and got the ranger. Get this guy out of here. This is the third time he's done it. He just doesn't care. He was gone. Ranges can be very dangerous places. So when you take your CPL class, you want to take it with as minimal students as possible. Um, a class of six to ten, comfortable. Anything more than that, it can get shaky. <laughs> so um, he told me there was going to be ten, probably ten people in the class. That's how that's how many people he had signed up. It was going to be on the 21st. We all meet at this rec center, and there's a range downstairs. It's a 22 pistol range that's downstairs, 22 caliber only, pistols only. And I was like, okay. So I showed up to the class. There's probably I think there was about 20 something students there. Um, I'll put a picture in right here. It's also the thumbnail. And um, you can't see everybody because there's four lines of people and stuff, but there was a lot of people and there was four rangers that were going to be there teaching the class and dealing with the range. So we got into class and we spent about five hours doing the class stuff and um, that's a good time to start paying attention to the people in the classroom. and and kind of gauging who's new to firearms and who's not and and you can kind of get an idea of what situation you're going to be in. Um, simple stuff, it's, uh, they go through a booklet and um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's very helpful the way they did it here I'm speaking of, but um, it is what it is. You go through the, the NRA handbook and um, they teach you a lot of stuff that you pretty much already know. If you're interested in getting your CPL or your CCW, you're going to kind of already know these things. Um, but it is part of the class you take. 
After about four or five hours, uh, we go downstairs to do the range part of the test. And we have four lines of people, about six people in each line. And uh, four people will go up at a time and do their drills, their strong hand, their weak hand, you know, you go through different drills. And uh, all simple. And um, I was the first one in my line. I went up, um, started doing my drill, gun jams. Now, we were using... Ruger SR-22s. Uh, similar to this, this is the Walther P-22. Similar firearm, but of course not the same thing. I don't have one, but I am familiar with them. Um, we each had 10 shots. We were going to do 5 and 1 from the strong hand, 5 from the weak hand. Uh, gems once while I'm doing it from the strong hand. You know, clear it and everything. Always keeping your firearm downrange. You never point it anywhere else. I'll tell you about more than that in a second. Um, and I was like, wow, okay, so cleared it, went through, got the other hand, another jam, cleared it, finished my set, went to the back of the line. Get to the back of the line, I'm watching a lady, now this has nothing to do with chauvinists, I've seen plenty of amazing shots of plenty of females that can shoot a firearm without an issue, this just happened to be a female, and she's up there in the line, and I'm in the back of my line, I already did my drill, and she's like this. And I was like waiting for the instructor. Now, each there's four row, four people shooting at a time, and there's one instructor per person. And I'm kind of like waiting for the instructor to tell this lady that you have to move your thumbs because when this rail blows back, it will break your thumbs. It will break your thumbs, you know. And uh, he didn't say anything. I said ceasefire. And I was kind of embarrassed to do that, uh, but I didn't want to see this lady blow her thumbs off. I said, "Ma'am, you got to pull. You got to take your thumbs down." And the the ranger in her line said, oh, thank you very much. You know, he goes in and he says, you know what this guy just did was right. If you see anything that might be dangerous, make sure you do what he did and, and, called ce and call ceasefire. So um, she pulls her thumbs down. She does her drill. I go back up in line. It's my turn again. And um, I don't remember what drill we were doing, but my gun jammed two more times. And uh, I asked the guy who was in my, my uh, lane, I said, when's the last time these things were cleaned? And he's like, oh, they probably need to be cleaned. You know, they probably went through a few classes without being cleaned. Now, mind you, there's six people on our line, and we each shoot at least 200 rounds minimum while we're there. So that's 1,200 rounds, just that class and just that gun. There's only four firearms in the class. So I was like, sheesh, okay. You want to make sure that you have a clean firearm. Um, what I should have done before I loaded my magazine is I should have... And I didn't do this, and this is just what I should have done. I should have checked the firearm over and checked it out. And if you can look at mine, it's nice and clean. Um, that's the way a firearm should look, especially since in this class you weren't allowed to bring your own firearms. Again, it was a 22 caliber only fire uh, range. And um, in Florida, I was allowed to bring whatever firearm I chose myself. This place, they provided it for you. So... It jammed again, I went to the back of the line, that lady gets back up there, and sure enough, she's like this again. And um, I called ceasefire again after waiting a second or two to see if the ranger was going to say something. He didn't. And um, he said, you know, he says, oh, ceasefire. He goes, yep, yeah, ma'am, you got to take your thumbs down. That's going to fly back and break your thumbs. Um, she gets done with her sh shooting. A uh, lady in the far end comes up, and um, she was, every time she shot and hit the target, she would go, oh, I did it, I did it. You know what I mean? Every time. And every time, I would say, whoa, whoa, whoa. So finally, after the third time she did it, whenever you have a firearm, you always want to keep it facing downrange, and you never want to place your finger on the trigger until you're ready to fire the gun and you are on target. So you want to be on target, you want to fire the gun. Um, she would fire the gun and say, oh my gosh, I did it. And uh, finally, after I think the second or third time she did it, I said, ma'am, I said, you need to keep that gun facing downrange. Not only that, she was, she was gripping the gun like this. Uh, this probably actually looks better than what she had, but this is as good as I could get. I said, ma'am, you really want to hold that firearm like this. This is the grip you want. Um, Holding this firearm, yes, it's a 22, so it's not going to be too much of this. But if you shoot a higher caliber gun, this thing is not a, its not a good grip. It's not a good grip for holding your firearm. Uh, 
I'm sure there's a bunch of firearm people out there. You can hold the whatever, do whatever you like. I'm just telling my people this is a much safer, better, tighter, tighter grip for when you're firing. Um, so I told her how to do that. Again, the range guys weren't saying a word. <laughs> and now, and I told her, I said, and right in front of the whole class, and this is what I think kind of upset these guys a little bit. I said, if you haven't noticed, all four of these rangers here that are teaching this class are wearing bulletproof vests. And they were, as you can see in that picture that I posted. All four of them were wearing bulletproof vests. And they were wearing bulletproof vests for a reason. There must have been a lot of shaky times while they do classes. It's a very dangerous place. I said, we don't have bulletproof jackets ourselves. They didn't issue us any. So we have to kind of look out for each other. So please keep a firm grip on the firearm and don't point it anywhere but downrange where you are going to be shooting at the target only. It's very important. And after that, everybody's like, yeah, you know, I did think it was a little weird that they're wearing bulletproof jackets. Well, we're in a tight enclosed area shooting guns and these guys are right up there and we don't have bulletproof jackets. It's just, if you, you can kind of get the idea. Ranges are very dangerous. I'm so blessed that I have my own range out behind my house. And this is also why I have started teaching free classes on just basic gun safety um, so that people that are going to take their CPL classes or just have never shot a firearm before can come and learn how to shoot a firearm safely with proper grip and just with everything. Every little safety tip, you know, downrange, finger off a trigger until you're ready to fire, um, just proper etiquette. That way when they go into a CPL class or something like that or to a range, they can practice some gun safety and not end up shooting somebody else because that's just the worst thing in the world. Um, after we did the range stuff, we went upstairs and they have a legal part where um, everywhere else I've ever been, they have an attorney come in and tell you kind of the laws and the, what your rights are and how things work. And in this circumstance, they had a state trooper. Great guy, I actually know him now, but um, he really gave his opinion from his opinion and view. Uh, from an officer or cop's view. Um, I did not agree with almost everything he said. Um, one of the things was that if you know, you're involved in the shooting, the cops shouldn't come, you're going to tell them what happened. No. If you're involved in the shooting, which hopefully you never will be if you had to defend your life and you ended up shooting a person that was trying to harm you or take your life, then you need to, as soon as the cops get there, say, with all due respect, I need to have my attorney present before I answer any questions. For multiple reasons. Um, for the biggest one, you were just involved in a shooting. Um, that's a serious thing. It's a scary thing. You're not going to be 100% in the right mind at that time. And you don't, anything you say or do can be held against you, and it will be. Um, so you first thing you want to do is have your attorney present. Very important. The other thing you want to do is carry a CPL or a CCW insurance. I have it. It costs me about $32 a month. Um, best $32 a month you're going to spend because if you're ever involved in something like this you are going to have things to take care of you are going to want an attorney you're going to have to pay that attorney um, you know you could even be liable for different things and you want to make sure that you're going to be able to pay for those things so definitely want to get the CCW or CPL insurance very very important um, so that was my experience at this class um, I left there thankful. By the way, when we took the test, we all took the test. Pretty simple. Went over it as you did it. Um, and when it was done, you handed it to the person next to you. I don't know if this is the same in all cases. It wasn't the same for me in Florida. But you handed it, your paper to the guy next to you, and he handed you your, his. And they went over the answers, and you were instructed that if the person got it wrong, to exit out and circle the correct answer because they have to hand these papers in. So basically, everybody passes the test. I forgot to tell you, at least four different people shot the ceiling in this rec hall. We were in the basement of a rec hall. Kids are playing basketball upstairs. Now, I'm not saying these bullets were going to go through the concrete floor, um, but it was still a little bit weird. So, you got to be safe on the ranges. Find a class that is low in numbers. Find a class that does it more than once a month. Once a week would be great if you can find one. It's worth traveling if you have to to find one. Uh, even private classes, it's worth the extra money to do that. Um, it's just a very dangerous place, so just be careful out there. I hope that helps you. I know you just wanted me to tell you my experience and how it went, so that's what happened. And um, thank you all for watching. I know this wasn't snake-related. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you for watching anyway. 
And uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the notification bell, let you know when I upload a video. And as always, I love you all, send me bye.